intermediate value theorem uh, is something in calculus that allows you to test uh, for a zero when you don't know enough about the function to take a derivative or factor it or something like that. So what the intermediate value theorem says is that if you want, and this could be generalized to, to any uh, x or any y value you want, but usually you're saying we want a zero. So the intermediate value theorem says if you have a point on a function here, and you have a point on a function here, so if you notice I drew one of those points above the x-axis, one of those points below the x-axis, and I know that the function which has those two points is continuous, then somewhere in between this x value, let's call this one a, and this x value b, somewhere in between there, that function must have crossed zero. So let's just say to the left of a, it's you know doing something like this. So I'm not drawing the part connecting a and b yet. So think about it like this. There's no way that I could draw a line from this point to this point, assuming that it's continuous, and not cross the x-axis. So that's the important part about the intermediate value theorem. It has to be continuous. The function that you're using has to be continuous. So no matter how I want to draw this, variety of different ways, I would have to cross the x-axis somewhere in between a and b. So typically what you do for the intermediate value theorem is you're given a function, you're given an interval, a to b, and you would be asked, does this function, this interval, satisfy the intermediate value theorem? Or on a multiple choice question, you might be given many intervals and saying, which of these uh, satisfies the intermediate value theorem. So you need to check two things. Both, one, first, that this function is continuous on that interval. Secondly, if I try A and I try B in the function, one should give me a positive value and one should give me a negative value. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter which is which, it could have gone the other way, it could have been this way too. Same idea would have happened. But it's very important that it's continuous, and here's a good example of why. Let's say we had the function tangent of x, and we're going to use the interval pi over, pi over 4 uh, to... 5 pi over 4. We're saying, does the, is the intermediate value theorem guarantee you a zero on this interval? So if you had just checked the values on the, the ends of this interval, well, let's see if pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, what do they give us? Well, pi over 4, when you plug it into that tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Actually, let me make this. 3 pi over 4 for the sake of this example. If you plug in 3 pi over 4 to tangent, that's in quadrant 2, you would get negative 1. So one side gave me a positive value, one side gave me a negative value. But the intermediate value theorem does not guarantee a 0 here, and that's because tangent is not continuous on pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, because tangent has a discontinuity at pi over 2. Let's draw what this looks like. So tangent, of course, looks like this. I'm only drawing the section that I'm going to need to use here, where this vertical asymptote is at pi over 2. So the pi over 4 is like here. 3 pi over 4 is like here. You can see between these two values, tangent never crosses 0. There's a vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote. So even though you got the opposite values that you require, the first condition was not met that the function is continuous. So, in fact, you should always test the continuity first. Is the function continuous on this interval? Well, if your function was, say, a polynomial, then the answer is always yes, because polynomials are continuous everywhere. However, for any other function like that, 
you always got to consider. Is this continuous on my interval? If yes, then go ahead and test the numbers. If no, you can stop right there. You don't even need to do any testing.